my name is Hatem Ido, and uh, I'm married. I have two kids. Uh, I'm an undergraduate student right now in Bryan College of Health Sciences. Uh, I came to United States in 2013, in January 2013. Um, the very first time I was in Chicago, and then I moved to Nebraska on the same year. I'm originally from Iraq, from Sinjar city, north of Iraq. So I grew up uh, there in Sinjar, specifically in Khanasur uh, village. It's a village that is in north of Sinjar mountain. And I finished my high school there. And uh, My parents were farmers. We were living on the farms, you know, uh, like one mile from the village. And, uh, you know, the, the life was simple there. It was kind of, you know, simple. There were no a lot of big cities, all those stuff. Uh, our, our home was like one mile from the village where I would go every day, you know, like walking to my school, coming back. It was uh, when I first came to the US, you know, my sponsor was in Chicago, West Chicago, and uh, it was in middle of January, you know, it was all snowing, you know, and where I came from, there were not a lot of snow, so it kind of shocked me. And, you know, Chicago is a big city as well, so I was kind of uh, shocked, you know, to be transferred from a farmer in Iraq, you know, to a Chicago. Well, the culture, the very first thing is the culture. The culture is different from uh, where I came from. And uh, I, everything is different here. But there is one similarity between Nebraska and where I came from, like the farming stuff. And also those open areas, like when I travel from Lincoln to Omaha, for example, I see a lot of open area. I see, you know, uh, cornfields, you know, I see all those farmers. So I feel like that's close to where I came from. Other than that, but everything is, is different here, like the system, the, the culture, the people. I mean, everything is different. Well, the, I mean, the language, the, you know, the, the way the, I mean, the customer service here is, is kind of different for me. I mean, in a good way. So, I mean, we don't, we didn't have these customer service like back home. And the one we have here is awesome. I see, I see that's a different, one of the difference. Like adjusting to the system uh, like uh, like I said everything uh, here is different like you know uh, life is it's kind of scheduled based here like you know back home we, we uh, I would call it we had like more freedom like here if you have kids you have to have someone to watch them if you leave the home or you have to take them to the daycare or uh, like the school system is different here inside class outside class like uh, so adjusting to these things like the the legal system the, the the traffic system everything here around is different in Iraq you know if you have kids and if you have family like if you are working or something if you have like one of your kids sick you can leave easily your job and go take care of your kid but here, like sometimes there's a strict, more strict schedule where you can't leave your job or, or your, your school and go back, you know, take care of your family or all those stuff. And also at home, you know, you could have leave your uh, kids with your neighbor or your uh, one of your family members and just go to the work or school, you know, until at the end of the day. But here you can't because everyone else is working. So you have to respect their schedule as well. I'm studying cardiovascular sonography. No, I have not. I'm planning to visit mm -hmm. uh, because I have one of my sisters uh, there, uh, but after I finish my school. Well, one of the aspects that, you know, you could probably maintain your schedule, uh, I mean, your culture, sorry, it's being within UCD community. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being win within my community, going to the weddings, going to the, our traditional events, all those stuff, it's kind of helpful for me to 
maintain that culture as possible. I mean, there's some aspects, like I said, you know, uh, dealing with, with like the schedule here, with mm -hmm. the work, with the, you know, all the whole system here, that's kind of uh, culture that I bring to my home sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, internationally, I mean, there is a, you know, the best way to connect with them is a so social media right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, even before I came here, I used to have a connection with some of them, and we kept that connection, like, you know, calling by phone numbers, all those stuff. But after, you know, this social media that is the, I would say, the main connection between me and my friends mm -hmm. around the world. Of course, and um, I think I became stronger because I came to the different world that I can or could deal with, and I experienced a new culture, a new system in the world. That taught me a lot. Uh, and, um, I been stronger about my culture as well, after, specifically after 2014 when we uh, went through a genocide by ISIS, and that made me strong. It's hard. It's very difficult for us because both my kids, they were born here. Mm -hmm. And um, my older one, is, uh, she's going to school right now. But it's, it's very hard for us to keep that culture or identity here. But we try, I try to, you know, take them to our weddings, uh, traditional events, all those stuff. And also teaching them a language to try to at least keep, you know, a portion of that culture. That's my plan when I finish my school, you know, go back there, visit there for like a month or something, and I would like them to go there and experience that culture physically. Uh, most of them that are here, they came here in 2016, mm -hmm. but I still have one of, I, actually I have two sisters mm -hmm. that are in Iraq right now. Uh, yes, kind of, because yeah. most of those uh, who came here after 2003, they were individuals who worked for the U.S. Army. And when you work for the U.S. Army as an interpreter, you are eligible to bring your extended family members here. So most of them applied for their family members and they brought them here. What originally brought me uh, used the community because uh, I was in Chicago, you know, I was... With my sponsor, I was uh, like the only family or easy family there. And after I figured out we have the largest community here in Lincoln, Nebraska, then I decided to move and um, just to keep uh, some of our culture, maybe. I don't know yet. Maybe I will move because of the weather. <laughs> and uh, all this going to come when I finish my school because I, I have not decided to stay here all the whole life in Lincoln. Well, when I came here, there were no any UCD culture center. And, uh, but if I was in a different state, knowing no language, English language, I mean, I probably would come here, you know, just because of the UCD culture center, because I know there was a UCD culture center you know, in Nebraska, who can take care of me, help me with the language, all the stuff. My first thought when I came here, I, you know, I came by train from, uh, I mean, from uh, Illinois to Nebraska, and I was able to explore all those, like, views. So when I came here first, I felt that I was in back home because there is some similarities between here and back home. That's very expected. I mean, it's not gonna surprise me because when I go to the different world, I have to uh, expect that I will be experiencing their culture and I will be affected by their culture. So it's kind of, you know, not surprising to me. Uh, I'm an advisory board member right now uh, in UCD Cultural Center and I, I'm also a volunteer with YESDA overall, like international YESDA and I've been with them since 2015. That it's an inter international UCD uh, organization that is uh, created 
after 2014 genocide. And uh, Yazda was created in response to that genocide to try to prevent it in future, you know, prevent future genocides against Yazidis and other minorities. Because when I uh, decided to move, you know, I was in Chicago for three months and um, my sponsor had to give me a ride uh, to Chicago uh, downtown. And then he, uh, because I was not familiar with the system, whole thing, I didn't know anything about here. So he just, uh, he got my ticket and I came, I don't know through which state to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't know, like the map here. I don't know anything. It was not Lincoln, uh, to be honest. I, I'm not sure because when I first came here, there were some EZD who received me there and they dro drove me here. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember if it was Omaha or a city close to Omaha because I didn't, I didn't know the place by that time. watching those stuff, you know, and I, I'm kind of aware of what is happening in Iraq right now. There is some demonstrations who are, you know, going, peaceful demonstrations that are going against the government. They would like to change the whole system in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Because in 16 years or 17 years, there has not been any change in a good way in Iraq. It has been just going back, going back, you know, you know, the whole system is corrupt. The government is corrupt, you know, even the people became corrupt because of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no uh, employment, there is no, you know, educational services, there is no health care services. So they, they, they said, you know, you know, it's done now, we have to change something. Before I came here, you know, I, I finished my school and I joined my college uh, in a medical technology, whatever, institute. It was like a medical lab here. I was in medical lab, like associate degree, and I got my first year done. Then before I do or start my second year, my visa issued and it came out, so I had to travel to the U.S. Uh, in, in, in school, I mean, in high school, you take a one grammar class, but after I finished high school, I, I joined U.S. Army uh, in 2008. As, a, as an interpreter, I stayed with them for four years, mm -hmm. and I learned English pretty well. Just in Iraq, I was in specifically in port of entry. There was a port of entry between Iraq and Syria, right on the border, mm -hmm. in north of Iraq, I was there. I came here in uh, March 2013, and the genocide happened in August of 2014. Mm -hmm. So I remember it was nighttime here around 10 p.m. something, where I saw a post on Facebook. It says, you know, Sanjar's gun. That means ISIS took over. So I called my father and I talked to him. He said, you know, my father is, uh, my family, my whole family lived in the north side of the Sanjar mountain mm -hmm. and ISIS started on the south side. So they said, there, you know, my father said, ah, you know, there is not, nothing here, nothing yet. You know, it's okay. I told him, Dad, you have to run. You have, you know, you have to find a way to run or escape or go to the mountain because I know ISIS will take over because there was some, you know, some ISIS attacks before August, which is which was in June, in in, in areas around Sanjar where they were beheading people. So I knew if they get to the, you know, use this, they would do the same thing. So. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they wanted to go to the mountain, but when they tried to escape to the mountain, they could not find a way to go there. They just took their way all the way to the Iraqi Kurdistan. Yes, they got out before ISIS came through in a couple hours. And wow. even on their way to, to, to Kurdistan, my, my sister families, they, uh, they exposed some like a uh, shooting from ISIS, but fortunately no, no one of them get, got hurt. Mm -hmm. And they, they got their vehicle broke down on the road. So they had to like uh, take their kids and just climb, you know, with other, someone else mm -hmm. and they run with them. 
Well, um, there were no refugee camps until that day, but when they went to the Kurdistan, it's, well, it was like about 300,000 300, Yazidis, they flee together. So when they go, to, you know, they, when they went to Kurdistan, they had to set up uh, refugee camps for them. Turkey has taken over in, in Kurs, uh, Kurdish uh, land in Syria, and everybody is blaming President Trump for that. To be honest, mm -hmm. because they think he he pull over and he give them a chance, mm -hmm. you know, to go there. So um, I, I what I hear uh, there is some like I would say cultural or some cleansing happening there because Turkey mm -hmm. is trying to, you know. Uh, they kill some civilians, and they kill civilians. Even yesterday, there was some uh, mm -hmm. airstrike on some civilians. They killed about eight kids, mm -hmm. and they are, uh, you know, changing the, their, I think, schools. They want to, uh, you know, change like the language, and to be the whole tur Turkish system thing. I don't have a very close friend who got. Well, I had a friend who was a school school friend uh, who mm -hmm. got captured and killed by ISIS. Mm -hmm. And uh, my other friends, they were able to escape. Uh, my family as well. When 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 that happened first here in Lincoln, we all gathered as a UCD community and we wanted to protest in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I could not go because of my work. They did not let me to go. I was working in factory at that time. Mm -hmm. And by my other friends, they went to uh, DC, you know, they rallied there, and we were kind of happy with the decision that President Obama made mm -hmm. about authorizing uh, airstrike on ISIS, and he was able to break the siege on Mountain Center. Well, when I first was, when I first came here, you know, it, it was less t intense, as you said. Um, mm -hmm. I mean. I would be like, I could have tell like my parents, uh, for example, or my friend more freely that, hey, if you apply for a US visa, maybe you can be here. Mm -hmm. But after, after uh, you know, like the travel ban, all the stuff happened, I am not able to like, to tell that freely to my friends because mm -hmm. I know for sure they're not gonna be here. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's changed. Like the, the, the whole immigration system has changed and I think, uh, I don't know if that makes some people to be, you know, to look at refugees, you know, with different vision. I don't know. Their weddings. Weddings. They do have great weddings. Yeah, I would. I mean, one of the most interesting about it probably it's their wedding. It's every like it's like public. You know, everyone is gathering mm -hmm. without invitation. You because when a, a wedding happened, everyone. Everyone knows that they are invited, kind of invited to that wedding. So they have a very, it's a very generous community, a very mm -hmm. successful community if they got their chance. Well, we, we as Yazda or Yazidi Cultural Center, we've been working with Jeff sometimes uh, mm -hmm. since, since the genocide. And he visited Iraq as well, I think in 2018. Mm -hmm. I think Jeff is one of the big supporters of EZD case uh, since g the genocide happened. And he's a supporter of, of other uh, religious uh, minorities in Iraq, uh, to be honest. And uh, I think he's, he's a good uh, advocate for our case because he's trying to work out something for EZDs, I think. Uh, he's working on a bill, I think, right now. Well, we, I mean, I think we wanted him to be more maybe critical for the Turkish invasion on Syria because there is some Yazidis and other religious minorities in Syria as well who, who they are probably facing difficulties by Turkish and other, you know, uh, militia groups, not only Turkey. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, uh, we, we stand with them on mm -hmm. those, uh, you know, Turkish invasions on Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a rally or something here in Lincoln. I was one of them who participated and we signed a paper or something to support them and ask President Trump to change his decision, mm -hmm. you know, about the 
pulling out from Syria. Well, the, you know, my friends and family members who they live in Iraqi Kurdistan and Kurdistan is kind of independent region from Iraq right now. But in Iraq, there were some difficulties to connect with the other people in Iraq because the government was blocking internet service in the whole controlled region. Mm -hmm. So, but right now, no, I mean, I, I can connect with the people who are in Kurdistan, but not the people with the Iraqi area. I think Nebraska overall it's, it's, it's the best state that welcoming refugees because uh, Lincoln, like you said, it's, it's one of the, there is a big communities here like uh, Yazidis, Vietnamese, Arabs, all those, Kurdish, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that give me a picture about Lincoln that becoming or it's one of the most welcoming cities in the U.S. Uh, like welcoming refugees to the U.S.